Thing. So here we are. Hopefully you can all see that screen. Um, I'm Andrew Pratt. I'm a lecturer in the Department of Physics. And I'm also chair of the Departmental Research Committee, which is the role that is, uh, that's the reason I'm, I'm talking to you today. So the DRC, as we call it, is, is the committee within the Department of Physics that oversees all research related matters. And it acts as the interface with the university as well. So um, I'm in a good position to kind of have an oversight of what, what research is going on in the department. Uh, what I'd also like to say though, is that I've been in your position. In fact, 20 years ago, uh, I was applying for a PhD and the place I applied for as well as some others was, was York. So I was you know, going through the York application process 20 years ago. And uh, I'm very happy that I got, I got into York, here I am. Um, and it's been a real pleasure in that time to see how the department has grown. So some of the, the kind of success that Kieran talked about and, and how we've expanded not only in number, but in terms of research income and our research our measures of research success, we've, we've, we've gone up in the league tables in, on those measures. Um, it's been a real pleasure to be involved in that and to see that expand. And as he, he, he said as well, the postgraduate students are really integral to that success and expansion. So uh, we're looking forward to getting you involved in that going forward as well. So on to um, my presentation then. I'd like to talk about first just a, a bit of a preface of why are you here? That's how I originally titled this slide because um, you know, just thinking about why do you want to do postgraduate study? Clearly you love physics. Maybe you really enjoyed your research project um, and that's inspired you to go on and, and do some postgraduate study. But it's worth emphasizing that all of the academic staff are also researchers, pretty much all of them anyway. We um, love performing research. That's what drives us to understand physics. So it's not only why are you here, but why are we here? And I've got this nice quote that I took from a book that I was reading a couple of years ago. So it kind of summarizes nicely the scientific process in that we're trying to explore, observe, experiment, eliminate sources of error, compare theory with experimental findings, keep thinking, and finally draw whatever conclusions stand the test, but even then be open to challenge. Don't become a prisoner of your own ideas. Um, so as I say, that's from this, this book that I read on Faraday and um, uh, Maxwell. It is a really nice book, but it just nicely encapsulates what we're trying to do. It's not just you, uh, we're researchers as well. Your supervisors are performing research. And you know we really want to welcome the postgraduates into that research structure in the research groups with your supervisor, but in the wider departmental context as well. So on that note, we, want to put in place an environment that enables all of our researchers, no matter where they are in their careers, to be successful. And that's what I'll talk about today. So here's uh, an overview of research at York in the Department of Physics. So this quote here over the, the picture kind of nicely encapsulates what is our strategy? What is our approach to research? And we think we're a department at the forefront of pioneering research and technological development, seeking to make advances in fundamental physics that will shape the technologies of the future. So that, that last line there, uh, yes, we're doing fundamental physics. We're exploring some really exciting ways to understand the nature of the universe. No matter what research area we work in, we want to understand things at a fundamental level. But it's more than that. It's about applying that fundamental physics um, to solving some of the world's problems. These are global challenges. Um, clean water, clean energy, uh, climate change, data storage, et cetera, et cetera. They're all important global challenges that need scientists, not just physicists, to pull together to, uh, to address them. So in that sense, we have a clear vision to link our fundamental physics research to the technologies of the future so that we can help address some of these global challenges. And that's a theme that you will see emerging, well, it's already emerged, it, it will continue to be a very strong theme over the course of your careers over the next coming decades 
It's about applying fundamental science, fundamental physics to these larger global challenges. And, and that's where a lot of the kind of strategy right from the government level is, is geared um, to, to making that link. And, and that fits very nicely with, with our approach as well. So to kind of carry out that endeavor, we have four major scientific themes. Um, let's say we call them uh, institutes or research groups, but these are the main scientific themes in condensed matter physics, nuclear physics, physics of life and plasma physics. Now you're all applying for PhDs in one of these groups with a particular supervisor who will be working in uh, one or more of these groups, but that's how we kind of classify our, our main research groups. Each group has a, a coordinator who's one of the academics within that group and there are lots of sub themes that I'll talk about today as well. Another thing to emphasize is that our research is increasingly interdisciplinary. So we have very strong links to the other departments in the Faculty of Science at York. So for example, engineering, chemistry, biology, computer science and mathematics. These are all, uh, you know, we, we, as I said, it's, it's to, to address some of these challenges, we have natural overlap with many of these other departments. Uh, and so we work and apply for funding and even PhD students can be shared with these other departments. So we have strong links to all of those and those links are only going to become stronger over, over time. And all of this activity is supported by some um, research centers. So these are interdisciplinary research centers, which are kind of independent bodies away from the departments, but they're run by um, members of staff from from the different departments and these are equipped with state-of-the-art facilities um, so we have some really fantastic facilities across across the department okay so just looking at the the research themes in a little bit more detail here we uh, have an overview of the four groups <coughs> excuse me so yeah condensed matter physics nuclear physics physics of life and plasma physics this text here is showing the kind of size of those groups. This is accurate. Maybe it's uh, the one or two numbers uh, or one or two uh, figures out, but it's a, a fairly accurate reflection of where we are right now and how big each of these groups is. So um, it, for example, you can see condensed matter physics is the largest group in terms of uh, academic staff. And then the 12 postdocs in the condensed matter physics group that post PDRA is postdoctoral research assistant. It's kind of a one way of writing a postdoc and then postgraduate researchers 45. So you can see the numbers for each of the, the research groups. Physics of life is the most recently established group, um, but uh, it's, it's, it's established in 2018. And, uh, but that's a very nice size and, and uh, as, as well now. So these are our four distinct research areas. But an academic might be housed in one of these research groups, but there's no reason why they can't work across these themes. For example, researchers in our photonics group are looking at applications of their technologies and their, their structures to uh, looking at um, antimicrobial resistance, for instance. So that's in the field of biophysics biophotonics, I should say, um, using the materials that we develop in condensed matter physics to uh, detect various nuclear processes and particles uh, is something that's happened and been very successful. So that cuts across those two research groups. And just as a final example, uh, applying low temperature plasmas to medical technologies, it is, you know, has a collaboration between those research groups. So you know, this might apply to you as well. You'll come into one of these groups, but there's no reason at all. And in fact, it's something we encourage very strongly for you to work across the different research groups. Let's just uh, break down. These are broad themes, uh, condensed matter physics, nuclear physics, you know, they encompass a, a, a massive amount of different topics and we can't do them all. So we focus on different sub themes. So I'm just gonna run through those now for each group. So starting with condensed matter physics, the, the overall kind of aim of this group is to create and study advanced materials and nanostructures using experimental, theoretical and computational techniques. So, you know, it's condensed matter. So looking to manipulate and understand the properties of matter 
on different scales from the nano scale all the way to, to larger scale structures. And we do this in lots of different ways. So we have a, a, a large experimental activity. So we can grow these materials, for example, nanoparticles, and we can study their properties with experimental technique. But it's really essential that we link up with our theoreticians. Um, so I'm an experimental physicist, so I, I say we. Um, but I work closely with uh, theoretical physicists who are looking at modeling these materials as well. So we can predict the properties and then measure them experimentally. And that's the theme you'll see that's common across all of the research groups is this strong link between theory and experiment. It's absolutely essential and it's one of the key strengths of York. But in the context of CMP, that's all to do with, with advanced materials and nanostructures. So the main research areas are shown here, spintronics and magnetism, quantum science, nanomaterials, and photonics. So I'll talk about those a little bit more in a, in a second. And as already mentioned, these are supported by, by some of these excellent facilities that we have. For example, um, we have what we call the Nano Center, the York J, JOL Nano Center or JL Nano Center. So JL are a Japanese company that make electron microscopes. And we're really fortunate in that we have a suite of fantastic electron microscopes. And I'm happy to say that we're, we're, we're currently waiting for one to be delivered. It's a multi-million pound instrument that absolutely top of the range. It's aberration corrected, which means that it has sub angstrom resolution. It's, uh, it's gonna allow some really fantastic experiments. Already we have a good one, um, but that's a little bit dated now. So this, this new one that we're getting, I think the overall value of the grant it came in on was 4.7 million pounds, <coughs> excuse me. Um, th this, this is going to you know, be, be an amazing instrument. And it's specially tailored to environmental electron microscopy. So what we can do is let gases into the instrument um, to study they, we, in, the way they interact with materials in situ during the imaging. So that's, that's a really exciting development. And just an example of some of the facilities that we have. It's not only the experimental facilities though that <clears throat> that we have. We also have world leading expertise in computational methods of materials modeling. So for example, there's a density functional theory code called CASTEP, which uh, is actually the, the development of that and continued development of that is led by researchers at York. Many of you will probably be aware of that already, or you will be using it during your PhDs. And also from the magnetic materials point of view, we have something called Vampire, which was developed by our Dr. Richard Evans here at York. And that allows atomistic simulations of, of magnetic materials. And, and that's known throughout the world now and it is really taken off. So lots going on at the experimental and theoretical levels. And we, you know, this is resulting in considerable success in terms of our research output. Just as an example, we're getting a lot of publications in the leading journals, like the Nature Family Journals. Maybe you, you know the journal Nature and all of the subsidiary journals like Nature Materials, Nature Physics. Um, th th this is really the top um, level of publishing in academic research, and we're quite successful in that. All right, so I won't spend too long looking at the sub-themes, but I mentioned spintronics and magnetism. For those of you who don't know, spintronics you know that electronics is manipulating the charge of an electron uh, in electrical circuits. Well, spintronics is very similar, but you're also utilizing the spin property, the intrinsic spin of electrons to manipulate and store information. And so that's a, a large field that we have a, a strength in and, and uh, many researchers are interested in that. And that comes within, you know, looking at spin, different new spintronic materials. So this might be organic materials. So you might have seen organic LEDs in these curvy TVs and, you know, foldable displays. Well, imagine doing that with memory. So that, that would be new spintronic materials. Magnonics is about pure spin waves and manipulating uh, these spins within materials. Femtomagnetism, so looking at the way magnetism, magnetism in a material relaxes on the femtosecond timescale. So both from a, an experimental and a theoretical point of view. And we have lots of techniques that we can use to, um, to look at these materials. We can grow the materials using various methods, study them with techniques of magnetometry, 
electron microscopy. We have strong links to places like Diamond Light Source, which is the big synchrotron facility in Oxfordshire, where we can perform X-ray magnetic circular dichroism, and as well as the, the theoretical techniques as well. Uh, we have lots of researchers working in quantum science, another research theme, all the way from experimental quantum optics. We have, as I'll talk about later, the York Center for Quantum Technologies, which is a really exciting development in that we, we, have, uh, we lead one of the national quantum hubs looking at quantum communication technologies. And so we, we've just got a, a, a large second phase funding associated with that led by York where we're having this activity related to quantum cryptography and quantum communications. Uh, that's working with industry partners as well, as well as some theory related to quantum transport and, as I mentioned, density functional theory. Nanomaterials is another theme. So I mentioned nanoparticles, but everything from catalysis to using them for medical applications, some complementary techniques there as well. And finally, photonics. So this is kind of uh, manipulating light within these nanostructures, basically. And that has a lot of applications in things like sensors. Um, but one thing they've looked at recently is antimicrobial resistance. This is another global challenge that, um, you know, uh, bacteria are becoming resistant to treatment, basically, uh, and other microbes. So we need to understand why that is. And using some of trapping um, bacteria and other microbes within these photonic structures and studying their properties is something that we're, we're, we're pursuing. All right, so that's the condensed matter physics group. On to the nuclear physics group. So um, just take a drink of water. So as you can imagine, the, the, the principal goal of the nuclear physics group is to study the structure of nuclei and nuclear processes. Um, so this has lots of different aspects. Um, so as well as the kind of key fundamental understanding of nuclear structure and the nuclear theory behind that, it's also relevant to, for example, stellar evolution and nuclear astrophysics. So we have a, a large activity in that area as well. Um, but then it crosses over to a new activity um, in hadron physics. So this is following the appointment of a, a new professor last year, actually, uh, Professor Dan Watts, who, who's established an, a, a group already looking at hadron physics. So, for example, in the bottom left uh, image there, it's, uh, it's showing how they discovered a new particle called the hexaquark, um, which, which led to some publicity associated with that. And they just published a really nice paper putting that forward as a candidate for the explanation of dark matter. So that's some, some really exciting work. So as well as that kind of fundamental understanding of nuclear physics, um, something that we've been very successful at recently, um, and which uh, Stefanos is involved in actually, um, is in the applications of, of nuclear detectors, for instance. So um, radiation detectors, for example, you know, if somebody tries to bring a, 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 a dirty bomb into the UK, we need a way to try and detect that. So there's, there's some clear societal benefits to being able to have nuclear technology and, and nuclear detectors. So these applications of nuclear physics is something we're, we're very interested in. Uh, now, to do these nuclear physics experiments, you need large facilities. And so the, the people working in the nuclear physics group, and some of, the, some of you might, might do this, go a lot to international collaborators not so much in the last year or so, but hopefully they'll pick this up again. So for example, CERN, we have strong links to Riken in Japan, Triumph in Canada, Jefferson Lab in the UK. So that, you know, a, a PhD student working in this group might typically go and visit one of these major national facilities uh, once or twice during their PhD to get the data for, for their PhD. And, and that's quite an exciting time. So that's an overview of the nuclear physics group. Moving on to the plasma physics group. So this is the largest plasma physics group in the UK and the leading plasma physics group in the UK. And it's housed at what we call the York Plasma Institute. The, this is a little bit separated from our main departmental research building. And um, because we expanded so much, we've outgrown 
the building that we were, we're, we're in. So the YPI, as we call it, has moved into its own facilities where all the offices and all the members of staff are there. And just around the corner, they have their own dedicated laboratory building as well. And the um, activities of the plasma physics group or the, the YPI are, uh, are centered around these three main strands. So when you think of plasma physics, you might think of um, tokamaks and fusion. And that's, that, you know, that, that's natural. That's one of the key activities in magnetic confinement fusing, fusion. So trying to harness clean fusion energy uh, in these, these tokamak um, sort of uh, facilities. So they have strong links to the Cullum Center for Fusion Energy, which is again in Oxfordshire. And there they had the joint European Taurus, which was the leading tokamak um, for some of the kind of prototype studies leading into a commercial tokamak reactor. And also the founding director of the York Plasma Institute, Professor Howard Wilson, is the program director on a really exciting um, initiative, national initiative called STEP, which I think is the spherical tokamak for energy production, STEP. And the aim of that is to develop a commercial fusion reactor um, by 2040, I think it is. So it's a really ambitious program. It's a large 220 million pound uh, project. And, and one of our professors, Professor Howard Wilson is, is leading that, the, the program for that. Uh, so that shows the kind of standing of our plasma physics group. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a, as you know, it's a complex task to, to try and harness fusion energy. And there are lots of different um, things to focus on. And many researchers at York look at the instabilities within the plasma in the tokamak and nonlinear behavior. So that's, that's a particular focus. But the, the YPI researchers also look at laser plasma interactions. So for example, laser driven quantum electrodynamics, um, fundamental laser plasma interactions, what's, what's actually happening there, and recreating astrophysical processes in the laboratory, which you can do with these very powerful lasers. And, and again, that involves lots of international collaborators. And finally, there we have low temperature plasmas. So you probably think of plasmas as being millions of degrees, but you can actually get these lower temperature plasmas. And that's an interesting research field in itself. Um, for example, it can be used in uh, medical therapeutics. Uh, so in the bottom right image there, you have this kind of plasma jet, which um, imagine a pen where out of the pen is coming some sort of plasma. I think there's a lot of interest in using these plasmas for wound treatment, for instance. And so that's, that's the, the kind of manipulation of a low temperature plasma. Uh, and that's one of the um, key areas. As, as well as growing thin films using um, pulsed laser deposition where you generate this plasma and you can grow thin films of lots of materials. Nano manufacturing, um, we had a collaboration with Intel looking at um, the, the processes used to create microchips. So there's an overview of the plasma physics activity. And last but not least, we have the physics of life group. So as I said, this is the most recently established group we have in the department. And uh, this was really a strategic initiative to establish an activity related to biophysics because it became very clear that to understand many of the complex biological processes and phenomena, we needed, uh, well, physics could really help. And the techniques, uh, both theoretical and experimental, techniques that we have in physics could help to understand a lot of these biological processes. And also maybe we can manipulate and use some of these, uh, some of our knowledge of biology to, to help develop other types of technologies. And, and so that was a strategic expansion and it's been really successful. It's now a very solid and uh, um, research active research group, which focuses on three broad themes. The way they've divided themselves is in say, you know, they want to investigate novel tools, novel technologies and novel physics. And that really encapsulates their approach because it's not just uh, experimental techniques. They do have these kind of cutting edge fluorescence microscopes, for instance, they're used a lot to understand these processes that can go down to studying individual molecules uh, through to looking at biomineralization processes. The image here uh, with biomineralization underneath 
um, I think that's some sort of calcite crystal. So looking at how a living organism um, mineralizes in, into something that's solid. And I, there was a false color image of this uh, where it made it look like the Yorkshire white rose, which was quite nice, but I couldn't find it. But you can imagine it looks a little bit like a rose, I guess. Um, but then there's also a strong theoretical activity. So modeling the way that DNA interacts with proteins and surfaces, for instance, and how we can untwist the DNA molecule and attach it to different things. And that crosses over into looking at soft matter in general from a theoretical perspective. So that's an overview of our, our physics of life activity. And I, I should say that it's associated with another university center, interdisciplinary center, the Biological Physical Sciences Institute, the BPSI. So that's one of the centers. Just to, uh, to move on, uh, just a few slides left, but I want to talk about the research centers that we have to support the activities in these four major research groupings. So I've mentioned some of these in passing already, um, but just to, to, to put a focus on them again, we have the York Center for Quantum Technologies, uh, where it's, it's really looking at the application of quantum theory to, to emerging quantum technologies. And that crosses over very much with, as I say, this, this quantum hub that we have, which is looking at quantum cryptography and quantum communications. And, and with one of the aims of that is uh, quantum security in, in, in future communications. So that's a really big initiative. Something I haven't mentioned is uh, the Center for Energy Efficient Materials or SEAM. This is a relatively new center, but it's looking at basically uh, working with industry to solve some of their problems and uh, relating to uh, materials. So all the way through from modeling and synthesizing the materials to characterizing them to applying them in some of these technologies, information and communications technology, solar energy, energy conversion and catalysis. So for an example here is some research that I was involved in looking at electrical steels. So these are the, the, the kind of steels, thin sheets of steel used in transformers and um, um, electric motors basically. So uh, the electrification of society is, is something that's going to be really important. You might have seen the announcement that um, Jaguar are going to go all electric by 2030. So we need stronger, mo um, stronger motors where the magnetic materials are lighter to make them more energy efficient, basically. So there's a lot of activity related to that. And just to uh, get you thinking, did you know that they're working on electrical electric aeroplanes as well? So replacing, you know, uh, sort of um, fossil fuel powered aeroplanes with aeroplanes that run on um, batteries, basically. So, yeah, that's that's something that's un under development. So an, an example of where industry is interested in our, our research. And then another center we have is the York Jail Nano Center that I mentioned. Here's a, a kind of just an overview of an electron microscope, in that case, a scanning electron microscope. And then on the left is a snapshot of a transmission electron microscope image where you can see very nicely the atomic positions of, of materials within a structure. Um, so this is a spintronic device where you have these half metals, CFMS, uh, copper, iron, manganese, silicon, or magnesium silicon um, separated by this silver layer here. And you can really nicely see the power of electron microscopy in that one. So that's that's something you might be involved in as well. Just to, to kind of recap things, as well as giving you an overview, I want to emphasize that our research is really interdisciplinary. This is something that's strategic, it's important. So we physicists are well represented at the university level in our research centers. We lead all of these centers that I've mentioned. Um, we have a wide range of funders. So the money that we get to fund research comes from lots of different bodies. For example, the Engineering and Physical Sciences Research Council, the Biological, um, BBSRC Research Council, Medical Research Council, Leverhulme, et cetera, et cetera. This is really good for us as a department, in turn good for you as PhD students. Uh, the university has their own research themes, which is strategically what they think is important in terms of the research that we do. 
And one of the most relevant is technologies for the future. And physicists lead have led this from the beginning, actually. Initially, it was Professor Thomas Krauss, and now we have Professor Dan Watts and Mark Leake running it. So they're, they're the champion of that uh, research theme. And we have strong overlap with these other research themes as well. And it's impactful. We work with industry. So leading companies like JOL, uh, Toyota, Intel, Seagate, who make uh, most of the world's uh, hard disk drives, the atomic weapons establishment um, on the nuclear detectors, and Smith and Nephew on the biomedical applications. So we have strong links to companies for developing some of these technologies that I've, I've talked about. So I think that's me done. I'm just going to put up my quote again, because hopefully I've given you a flavor of the research environment we have in the department. We have these research groups and we have all of these uh, different activities that I've described to you. So um, I'll leave it there. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be around for any questions later. So um, we're looking forward to welcoming you into the research environment of the department. Thank you very much.